This is Aiko Chihira. She works at Tokyo's upscale Mitsukushi department store as a greeter. There's just one thing though. She's a robot, not a human. It sounds strange and honestly like something out of some futuristic movie, but the truth is, this is becoming pretty normalized in Japan. Let me explain. Japan has a major population problem. It's declining rapidly, with very few young people to replace the elders. From 2019 to 2020, Japan's population dropped by about 400,000 people. Now that's insane, and it's only going to get worse. By 2050, the population of Japan will be about 100 million. 25 million less than it is now. But even more importantly, the labor force, that is those aged between 15 and 64, will decrease by 24 million. The issue lies in their birth rate, which currently sits at 1.4 per woman, significantly below the 2.1 threshold needed to sustain population growth. And that too is only falling more and more, as you can see. By 2065, Japan is expected to see a 40% decrease in its total workforce. So, if your population is aging fast and declining, then who will fill all the jobs? Some would say immigration is the solution, which it is for many countries. But Japan has extremely strict immigration laws. So instead, the answer is robots. And Japan's been pretty knowledgeable about them for a long time. Back in 1995, there were 700,000 industrial robots used worldwide, 500,000 of which were being used in Japan. This is due to their deep-rooted culture of embracing technology, automation, and robotics. In fact, there is a term to describe Japan's unique approach to production, monozukuri. It is described as combining the technological skill, know-how, and spirit of Japan's manufacturing practices into one word, and is considered a source of Japanese pride. There is also a completely different mindset in Japan in terms of work. In the West, many are afraid of robots stealing their job. But in Japan, robots will reduce the amount of work an average person will have to do. Famous Japanese comics such as Astro Boy and Doraemon also portray robots as always helping people, reinforcing this belief. This culture has led to 47% of the world's robot production being made in Japan as of 2020, with companies like Funak and Yaskawa alone having a market share of 30% in the global industrial robot market as of 2019. So where do all these robots being made actually work? Let's break it down. The electrical and electronics industry accounts for 34% of use. The automotive industry accounts for 32%. The metal and machinery industry accounts for 13%. And as for the other 21%, well, I'm going to call this the citizen industry. And I suspect it will grow vastly in the future. A good example of it would be this. The Henna Hotel, located in Nagasaki. It's known as the world's first robot hotel, with 90% of the employees being robots, and only 10% humans. Upon walking in, you'll be greeted by robots who work as receptionists. And yes, that is literally a dinosaur. In fact, there's usually multiple. They can also speak four languages, Korean, Japanese, Chinese, and English. So yes, these robot dinosaurs speak more languages than 97% of the world. But I guess that's expected since they're, you know, robots. There's robotic luggage carriers ready to carry your bag into your room. And of course, throughout the hallways, there'll be small cleaning robots. In your room, you'll notice yet another robot, and that would be Chiri Chan, which is basically like Amazon Alexa. The last robot in the hotel is an automated robotic arm for luggage storage, just across from reception. Now, this is one of the many examples of this citizen industry I mentioned, and it's not just limited to hospitality. For example, there's been crowds of up to 100 robot cheerleaders, known as the Pepper Squad, in the home stadium of the professional baseball team, Fukuoka Softbank Hawks. And then there's robotic English teachers, robo taxis, robots repairing railway lines, robot security guards, even robots working as TV hosts, and more. Then there are robots that care for the elderly, which is an increasing burden given the aging population. It is estimated that in 2025, there will be a shortage of more than 380,000 care jobs to meet the needs of the elderly. If you take a look at this graph, you'll see that the 65 and over age group makes up more and more of the population as time goes on. And here, as expected, the market for service robots in healthcare and nursing will only grow as a direct result of this. It's stuff like this that slowly continues to integrate into Japanese society, but it's a necessity with the future of Japan at stake. And I must say, they're all pretty efficient. Take a look at the Obayashi Giant Dam. It's being built almost entirely through the use of robots. The cranes are all fully automated, the concrete is poured by robotic machines, and each part of the dam will be laid down by robot limbs. The Obayashi Corporation estimates that productivity will increase by about 10%. 
Now, this is a large productivity increase and one that is hard for any business to refuse. But it's still not as big as it will be one day. The productivity increase is limited by the fact that each of the processes of construction will be managed and overseen by human workers. But once the need for a human presence is lowered or gone entirely, building time for such a structure could be reduced by about 30%. And with it, construction costs would lower significantly. Now, while this is a first for Japan, it's huge. Japan's construction industry is an aging one, with 35% of the workforce being 55 years of age or older. So they need these robots now. Like, now whether the robots are ready or not. Not to mention the country has entered their fourth decade of low economic growth in a row. All of these things have contributed to Japan's ultimate goal of becoming the first country to achieve economic growth with a shrinking population by becoming what they call a super aging, super smart society. And that is Society 5.0. This is where technology, whether it's robots, artificial intelligence, high performing computing, 5G or extended reality leads the way forward. It's essentially Japan's total solution, and possibly where all of humanity may progress to as well. To adapt to this new world, new smart cities are being constructed around Japan. Let me introduce to you Woven City. This is one of them. It's now under construction at the 175-acre site of a recently closed Toyota subsidiary plant at the base of Mount Fuji. Woven City will serve as a living laboratory for self-driving vehicles, delivery robots, smart homes, and artificial intelligence. There will be in-home robots helping with people's daily lives, with technology overall being integrated into the lives of the residents at a level not yet seen across the world. It'll all be cleanly powered by hydrogen fuel cells too. With its partial opening set for as early as 2024, the city will initially have roughly 360 residents, such as seniors, families with children, and inventors. And that number is expected to increase to over 2,000, including Toyota employees. It's been labeled as the city built for happiness. But whether it turns out that way is a completely different story. But this trend is rising. Local governments made more than 50 proposals for smart cities in Japan in 2020, with only five being approved due to the strict, high standards needed. But the point is, they're growing. And the rest of the world is certainly watching. You see, while this aging population situation is a huge problem in Japan right now, it's not as bad as for the rest of the world, but it's still happening, just slower. In manufacturing industries across the world, 126 of every 10,000 workers are robots. This might not sound like a lot, but it is nearly double the 66 it was just five years ago. In fact, between 2015 and 2050, the proportion of the world's population over the age of 60 will nearly double from 12 to 22 percent. Japan's neighbors, China, is one of the many countries that are slowly facing this problem, except at a rate more comparable to Japan due to stuff like the one-child policy and culture. So they're acting almost as quickly and taking steps from Japan's global influence in this sector. As Japan's operational stock of industrial robots continues to grow, so do their exporting numbers. And China especially has been a huge buyer. 78% of the robots produced in 2020 in Japan were exported. That is 136,069 robots. Of that, 36% of the exports were sent to China. And this doesn't even count the Japanese manufacturers who also serve the Chinese market directly from their factories in China. Then there's South Korea, who actually leads the world in robot density, with 631 robots per 10,000 employees, and are also building smart cities. But with all this integration, there have been struggles, and no country is quite ready for total integration yet, nor are the robots perfect either. Remember the Henna Hotel? They actually ended up firing half of their robots after just four years due to complaints from both staff and customers, stating that they created more work than they solved. So, robots aren't perfect yet. And despite the success of the construction of the Obayashi Giant Dam that we are seeing, Japan has recently majorly loosened their immigration laws, allowing foreign nationals in certain blue collar jobs to stay indefinitely. It's expected to only loosen up more overall, which is the acknowledgement that Japan isn't ready for this advancement, at least not yet. But despite all the current shortcomings, Japan's implementation of a Society 5.0 and total robot integration will likely have a huge influence on not only how we produce things in the future, but also how we live. Once we're technologically advanced enough, I personally think it may be the future of us all. Thank you for watching.